Okay. Um, new announcement. Again, to remind you that at uh, Digital University, there are really hundreds and hundreds of new videos in preparation. Uh, the topics that have been most requested for providing tutoring help with are calculus videos, vector analysis, uh, mechanics, organic chemistry, differential equations, electrical circuits, uh, molecular genetics, so they're all in preparation, plus there's much, much more that we're trying to make it available. Also, featured on the website are three reports that you might find of interest to you. And again, uh, very important, your comments and your responses, they really count. We're trying to, as you keep saying, uh, trying to find a user-friendly, common-sense approach to different subject matters that during the first exposure to them, they might seem very difficult, very challenging, and again, hopefully together, we can kind of break through some of those barriers. Now, in this video, we're going to begin our discussion of the class transform. And it's, a lot of people during their first exposure to it find it rather cumbersome to work with. So, let's just start right from the beginning. If there's some function, say, f of x, and we want to take the Laplace transform of it, and it's this integral expression, we're going to take f of x, and we're going to multiply by e to the minus sx dx. X goes from 0 to infinity. Now the first thing you have to be aware of is that if I'm going to get an expression for this integral that has e to some power, you have to be careful because you might get an improper integral here because one of the limits is actually at infinity. Let's see how that, how we handle that. Um, let's just start with something very simple. Suppose we're going to take the Laplace transform, say, just of the number 4. Well, let's just use our definition. That would be the integral then of 4 times e to the minus sx dx. The s is just here, it's just some variable. And x goes from 0 to infinity. So, of course, we can just take the full to the outside. And to evaluate this, we just use a new new substitution. We say that u is equal to minus s times x. So then dv, that would be minus s dx or minus 1 over s times du, that's dx. Let's go back to our integral. This equals 4. And here, instead of e to the minus sx, we have e to the u. And instead of dx, we have du divided by this. So we have du. And then here we're going to have the minus sign for it, so it looks like this, and again x goes from 0 to infinity, so this equals minus 4 over s, and this is just the integral of e to the u, so e to the u is this, minus sx x goes from 0 to infinity. And needless to say, this is the part that might give us a problem. Well, let's look at this part of the exponent. If this part right here is positive, then we're taking e to the minus infinity, which is 1 over e to the infinity. That 0 uh, 
up, at least it doesn't blow up on us. So, but here then, S, the only requirement we have is that S be greater than zero. Then, we would have, this would be equal to minus 4 over S times E to the minus infinity. It's 1 over e to the infinity minus, now x is 0, so that's e to the 0, which is 1. So this equals plus 4 over s. Or in more general terms, we can say that the Laplace transform of some constant is simply equals that constant divided by s. And in fact, what we're going to see as we keep taking more and more complicated examples, once we go through this process, what we're going to end up with is some function of s. So we're going to start keeping a table then of the different functions that we're taking the plus transform. So And in general, we'll organize it like this. We have a function f of x, and then we have its corresponding Laplace transform, which is some function f of s. Here, so far, all we've done is we've taken a constant and its corresponding Laplace transform, that's just A divided by S. Now let's try something, well I'm not in this video, we'll say for the next video because we may not have enough time in this video, but in the next video then we take the Laplace transform, say of E to the KX. And let's see what that equals to. And then what we're going to do is we're going to keep building up our table here of different functions that we consider and what their Laplace transform turns out to be. Uh, and then once we've accumulated, say, for like four or five of these um, different functions and what the corresponding cost transforms are, we want to jump in right away start seeing how we can use this information for solving differential equations. Also, along the way, as we're discovering the Laplace transforms of more and more functions, we want to keep in mind how both sides of this work. In other words, here, if we have a constant k, we know, okay, this Laplace transform, that's just k divided by s. No big deal. Well, let's go the other way. If we have k by s as a Laplace transform, we know the function has to be k. We want to keep thinking of that as we go to a table up, because we want to be we want to learn how to think fluently, not just in terms of the function and its Laplace transform, but if we have the Laplace transform, what is its corresponding function? Well, we have to be able to think like that in order to become fluent to use this technique for solving differential equations. And we'll be considering all that uh, in our future videos. Anyway, come back, join us for the next video, and let's take the Laplace transform of this function, and we'll continue our discussion.